Set Podcast. And now, your host, Jake Naraki. Hello, Reset Nation. Welcome back to another episode of Operation Self Reset. I am Jacob Naraki, and I'm here to do a little reset button pressing on your life. Yep, that's right. I am here to annoy you. I'm here to get on your case, and I'm here to show you that there is a better way to live than what you are currently doing. And today, we're going to be talking about your morning routine. Now, raise your hand if you have trouble getting out of bed. Okay, that's everybody. Raise your hand if you press the snooze button more than 17 times. Ooh, that's still everybody. So I think this podcast episode might be geared specifically to yourself. On the podcast, I have on Hal Elrod, and he created a book called The Miracle Morning. Now, you might be thinking, Jake, there's no miracles when it comes to the morning. I hate the mornings. It's ridiculous. It's so groggy, and I get angry easily. I hate taking a shower and brushing my hair and combing, (laughs) brushing my, I was going to say combing teeth. Yeah, okay, I got to stop this. So anyway, Hale created a book called Miracle Morning, and it's truly going to change the way you think about your morning routine. I highly suggest you listen to the whole thing. He has some great points, some great tidbits, and some great suggestions on how to start your day on the right foot. And if you have both of your feet still, then feet will go. Hey guys, welcome back. Today on the podcast, special guest, your morning is about to change. It's about to do a little reset because of Hell Era Elrod, right? It's Elrod, right? Uh, Elrod, yes, you got yeah, it. Yeah, right. Elrod, perfect. Um, created a book called The Miracle Morning. He is truly a hustler, a mover, and a shaker, and is inspiring millions of people. He has his own podcast. Um, he, he has gone through crazy things in his own personal life: a crazy car wreck, uh, selling merchant or selling Cutco knives, being a leader in that industry, and now spreading the the good word of fulfilling your own personal journey, your own personal destiny. Hail, man, thank you so much for coming on. Jacob, thank you for having me. And everybody listening, thank you for your valuable time. I will do everything in my power to make sure that that this is more than worth it for you. Perfect. Hail, I know you're going to over-deliver. So let's dive into... How did you think of the Miracle Morning? Be- before we give into what is it it's all about and stuff like that, how did you create this idea and decide to turn it into a book? Where did this come from? Yeah, so you know, it's both of my books uh, are are not ideas that I had for books. Uh, they they are both. Um, I went through the what I call my two rock bottoms, the two most difficult times in my life, and as a result of the what I was able to do to pull myself out of those and overcome both of them faster than myself and other people thought were possible. Um, though that's what became my first book is called taking life head on. And as you mentioned, um, I was hit head on by a drunk driver. Uh, I actually died for six minutes. I broke 11 bones in a coma for six days. Doctors said I would never walk again. Three weeks later, I took my first step and against doctor's orders, I got back to sales work and, you know, and, and was one of the top reps in the company that year. And so the doctor thought I was in denial because I was so positive and upbeat and happy, even though I was 20 years old and they were telling me I would may never walk again. So that led to my my and this is kind of backstory for the new book. But my first yeah. book was, wow, like I as we the years went by and it took me, you know, six years to publish the book, taking life head on my first one. But it, it was like. I, I got clearer and clearer on what I was able to articulate. What were the strategies, the mindsets, the principles? What was it that allowed me to overcome the most difficult experience in my life? And then I felt a friend of mine, uh, John, said, "How you have a responsibility to share your story and and what you learned. You know, you should write a book and become a motivational speaker and that sort of thing." So. So that was the first book. And then um, my first rock bottom is what produced that. And in 2008, so that was actually, that accident was December 3rd, 1999. I was 20 years old. And oh. fast forward uh, eight or nine years later, I was on top of the world again. Like I had rebuilt my career. I was a Hall of Famer. Um, I had just bought my first brand new house. I had launched a, I had retired from the sales position, launched my coaching business and my speaking career. And when the U.S. economy crashed, uh, it all came crashing down. And like so many Americans, I obviously wasn't alone in this. Uh, but but overnight, I lost most of my income. I couldn't pay my bills. Um, I, I lost my house. Uh, I, I charged over $50,000 on credit cards over a six-month period just, just trying to survive living on credit cards. 
Uh, I completely stopped exercising. I was eating horribly. And as a result, I was literally in the worst shape of my life physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, uh, relationally. Uh, I was deeply, deeply, deeply depressed uh, to the point of where I was borderline suicidal and I didn't want to get out of bed in the morning. And sure. this is what led to the miracle morning. Uh, I, I had, you know, it's funny now that I actually am saying this. I, I don't, I don't know if it, I don't know if I ever realized this, but it was a conversation with the same friend, John Berghoff, that told me I should write my first book. That that changed, you know, really changed my life uh, the second time. And uh, I got to send him a thank you card. But yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I would say <laughs> I. Uh, so. John, uh, we were, I finally called to confess because I was being depressed. I didn't want to tell anybody about my depression because I was a success coach. So Jacob, you might imagine as a success coach who now all of a sudden was failing miserably, uh, you know, it just, it didn't feel right to call my, you know, people that I knew and say, Hey, I'm, I'm failing miserably, but do you know anyone that needs a success coach? (laughs) Right. Right. Like, right. That's uh, opposite completely of what you're trying to do. Clients at this point. So that would really help me. Right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it just it just it was totally incongruent with my identity. Um, finally, my wife said, and she wasn't my wife at the time; we were boyfriend girlfriend. But she said, "Hal, uh, I love you, sweetheart, but I don't know what else to do. I don't know how to help you. You should really call. You know, you have some really intelligent friends. Call your friends and uh, get some advice. They love you. They're not going to judge you. You know, I think we're so afraid sometimes when we're down in the dumps. Like either we don't want other people to judge us, or we don't want." Um, we don't want to bring other people down or we're right. embarrassed because it hurts oh, our ego. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so she goes, call John. He loves you. He's not going to judge you. You know, he's, he's really smart. He can, he can give you some business advice to turn this thing around. So I swallow my pride. I call John and I, I, I you know, I, I, I like, John, can I talk to you? Like 10 minutes. I need to, I need to bear my soul. Right. And I let John know everything that was going on and how bad it had gotten and how, you know, how just how mentally and emotionally I, I messed up I was. And I, I'm sitting there ready to take notes and get some business advice from him on like, OK, here's ABC one, two, three. This is what you got to do, Hal. You'll it'll get you clients, make you money. You'll turn things around, get back on track. And um, as I wait for his response, his response totally disappoints me. He says, Hal, um, are you? Uh, are you exercising every day? <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm quiet for a second, and I'm like, "What the hell does that have to do with anything I just told you?" Right. And I said, you know, and, and so now I'm starting to think: Is he over on the other end of the line, like playing on his phone, not even listening to me? <laughs> right. And I go, John, I, I, no, I'm not exercising, man. I can barely get out of bed in the morning. And he goes, Hal, look, I'm serious. I'm not joking around. You're a smart guy, but if you're not getting blood and oxygen to your brain every day, if you're not releasing the endorphins that exercise releases, if you're not putting yourself in a peak physical state, you're not going to be able to think clearer and make better decisions and turn things around. He said, the best thing you can do is go out, the, leave the front door every morning, go for a run, grab your iPod, listen to some motivational, you know, some audio books, self, self-help, whatever, listen to some free iPods, iPods, iPod, uh, podcasts, <laughs> podcasts. There you go. There you right? go. Yeah, we're getting there. They, 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 yeah. I don't even think they were around back then. So I don't think sure. that, that probably wasn't the recommendation, but that's what I would tell somebody now, right? That's free. Right. So if you're, right. if you're where I was, you're financially struggling, listen to some podcasts like, uh, Jacobs operation Re- self reset. But, um, so here's my response. I said, I- I'm not a runner, you know, John, give me something else. And he goes, Hal, what do you hate worse running or your current life situation? And it really reminded me of, of something that we all have to take to heart, like every day, all day, like every day. And it's a, a quote from my mentor, Kevin Bracey, and I'm sure it was said by someone else, you know, probably many times over the years. But it was simply this. If you want your life to be different, you have to be willing to do something different first. Right. And as common Very sense true. as that sounds, most of us don't do anything different. We wake up every day. And we go through the same routine and we do the same things over and over and over again, wanting our business to improve, wanting our income to increase, wanting that, you know, wishing we had more energy or we were happier. Right. Right. And so I said, all right, I'll suck it up. I'll run. And the next day I go for a run. And on that run, I hear a quote that changes my entire life. It becomes the catalyst for the miracle morning, the catalyst for my work, everything I do. And it's from Jim Rohn. And and the funny part is I'd probably heard this quote. Yeah, I don't know, you know few times before at least, right? Mm-hmm. 
But sometimes you got to hear it the right time, the right moment, and you've got to be open to really receiving it and op- more importantly, open to doing something different in your life to, to apply it. Yeah. And the quote was, your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development. Ooh. And in that moment, here's what hit me. And let me, let me share this in a way that everybody can really, like you can quantify it. If we're measuring success, I'll ask you this, Jacob. If you're measuring success on a scale of 1 to 10 in any area, your, your relationships, your finances, your health, your bu- business, whatever, on a scale of 1 to 10, what level do we want in every area? 10, of course. Level 10, right? Nobody's right. like, eh, I don't want to be 6. too 5, happy. 6.5. Yeah, right. like a 6.5. <laughs> I don't want to annoy my friends and be that really happy person. No, right. we want level 10. Of and course. what I realized is my level of personal development was not at a level 10. In fact, at that time, and let me define personal development for people. I define it as who you are beyond your circumstances, who you are as a person related to your beliefs, your knowledge, your confidence, your emotional well-being and your emotional intelligence, right? Like all of that encompasses your level of personal development. And at that time, I was demotivated. I had no clarity. I was, you know, I wasn't exercising at all. I was depressed. So my level of personal development was at like a two and I wanted level 10 success. And I think that's the disconnect for 99% of people on this planet is that we want level 10 success, but we're not dedicating extraordinary effort every day to becoming a level 10 person that can easily create, attract and sustain the level of success that we want. Sure. The question I have, though, when people are reflecting on that, it's tough when you're in that moment. You know, when you say, I want level 10, well, where are you at now? Well, I feel like I'm at a 7, but in actuality, you're, you're level 2, like you're, you were at. Like, do you, would you ask somebody else's opinion, you know, to, to get a better gauge of where you think you, I mean, where you really are as opposed to where you think you are? That, yeah, that's a great question. And I think that there's a couple, a couple ways to look at this. Number one is that the one thing we all share in common is that we are nowhere near our potential. Right. True. True. Even when I was at the top of my game, or even as I look at my life now, I try to really, you know, I, I really try. Like when I when I rate myself on a scale of one to ten, I, I, you know, it feels good to be like I'm a nine. I'm crushing it right now. My <laughs> right. income's better than it's ever been before. I'm, you know, I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm exercising every day. Business is great. That's easy, right? right. Um, but but why don't you go? Okay, let's. So when you compare yourself on a scale of one to ten. Um, you want to look at you compared to your full potential. So if you're making $100,000 a year and your potential is a million dollars a year, then you're a one on a scale of one to 10, right? Right, right. You know, um, quantifiably. But, but I mean, meaning that I just try to be really like on the other end of like, okay, I'm like, if I feel really good, like I can't feel better about where I am in an area, that's a seven for me. Okay. Right? Where right. some might say it's a nine. Um, if I feel like I'm, you know, I'm not bad, not great, that's like a five. Sure. And if I, right, so like for me, um, and now and everybody's different, right? You might be, you know, you might be like nowhere near your potential, nowhere near where you want to be, um, but you're still a seven compared to where you could be. You know, I don't know. So everybody's yeah. different, if that makes sense. Sure, but, sure. Um, so what ended up happening was on on the run, uh, I hear this quote and it hits me. I've got to dedicate time every day to personal development. Right. And, but, but I'm thinking not just like, like dabbling in it as many of us do or I, as, as I had done before. I thought if I, want to, if I want to become a level 10 person ASAP, I've got to create the most extraordinary personal development routine known to man, right? Cool. So yeah. I run home and the first thing I Google is best personal development practices, and I'm reading articles from Forbes and Entrepreneur and Huffington Post, and I end up coming up with a list of six. And at first, Jacob, I'm really disappointed because I've heard of all of them, right? Like, aren't yeah. we all, we're always looking for the magic bullet, the magic right. bullet, right? right? That one thing, that just one that, little thing. The one thing that we've never heard of that seems <laughs> right. easy enough to change our life. And so as I write these six down, at first I'm disappointed, and then I, I get real and I go, you know what? I don't do any of these every day. Right. And here I'll just I'll list off the six. I won't keep this a mystery. It's it was meditation. Uh, I found this great article on Fortune 500 CEOs that meditate. Right. Found a great article on how Oprah swore by transcendental meditation. She taught it to all of her employees, you know. Um, So it was meditation, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading and journaling. And 
so I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I don't do any of these. And, and, and successful people, you know, they, they usually swear by at least one or two of these. All right, so I'm going to commit to doing one or two. And so I start to I, – I keep reading articles going, which – I want the biggest bang for my buck. You know, right. like I need to know which of these is going to – you know, increase my income the fastest, right? Is it journaling or is it visualization or is it affirmations, right? Right. Right. And then I, I, none of them is more, like everybody swears by different ones, but they're equally compelling. And so I go, you know what? It hits me. I go, what if I did all six of these every day in a structured, organized way? I thought that would be like personal development, like turbocharged, you know, on steroids. And so to wrap this up, the final the final challenge was when in the hell am I going to fit an extra hour into my day? Right. Like I'm, I'm swamped just trying to survive. And what I, you know, what of course became apparent is like, I've got to, I've got to cut out an hour of survival time to an hour of, well, thrival is not a word, but sur- from survive to thrive. Right. <laughs> right. So thrive time. And, and so looking at my schedule, I'm going, when am I going to do this? And it just hits me. You know what? Frickin' A, man, I got to get up an hour earlier. Uh, I didn't want to do this. I was very resistant because I wasn't a morning person. But I thought, I got to get up an hour earlier, and I got I to you know, I gotta, you know, get out of my comfort zone. And right. I got to dedicate an hour every morning to extraordinary personal development. And so that night before bed, a couple things. I prepared for the morning. I, I didn't know how to meditate. I didn't really know affirmations. I Googled all of it, and I got it all. I printed out some affirmations. I pulled out a, one of my blank journals off the shelf that I had never written in for like more than a few days, and I, I got prepared. I think that's really important. A great morning doesn't start when the alarm clock goes off. It starts the night before with your preparation your and your intentions that you set for the morning. You decide when the alarm clock goes off, no matter how I feel, I'm getting out of bed because I've got an hour or 30 minutes or whatever it is dedicated. Like I, I'm, I'm waking up with a purpose, right? Right, right. And I'm not waking up to check email, which I could easily justify sleeping in and skipping, right? And doing oh, yeah. later. Easily, right. Yeah. And so that night I went to bed feeling like a kid on Christmas Eve. I like, I was tossing <laughs> and turning. I couldn't wait to wake up and try this thing out. <laughs> And the alarm clock went off, and I felt like a kid on Christmas morning. I freaking jumped out of bed. I turned off the alarm. No, normally, I would hit the snooze button and, and dread waking up because my life sucked. It was a mess. Right. I woke up excited. I went through, and I did 10 minutes of each of these practices. And, you know, 10 minutes of meditation. I, mean, I was horrible at it, you know, but I still <laughs> felt really centered and really calm. And I was like, wow, if this is all I did every morning— my life would change. My stress would go down. I'd be more at peace with my challenges. I'd have more clarity. I went through and did all six practices. And by 6 a.m., I, I, I don't remember a time in my life when I had felt that centered, that calm, that, that motivated, that right. inspired, that energized. I mean, I was just, I felt amazing. And I thought, wow, if I do this every day, and this is how I start every day, feeling this on point, even though my life is still a mess, I feel amazing. Like this could be the one thing that changes everything. And two months later, I had more than doubled my, as a direct result of my morning routine, which which by the way, it wasn't called the miracle morning until the results happened. And then I went, wow, this changed my life so profoundly. And so quickly I'm calling it my miracle morning. I had doubled my income my depression was, it didn't take two months for my depression to go away. That was gone in 24 hours. I wouldn't say gone, but it was like, it went from being Subsided, 90% sure. of my consciousness to being like 30 and then 20 and then 10 as the days went by. Um, mm-hmm. I went from being in the worst shape of my life physically to tra- immediately beginning, I committed to an ultra marathon, a 52 mile marathon, I, which I trained for and completed five months later. Wow. Uh, and my relationship, which was falling apart because I was falling apart, it immediately started to thrive again. And I, you know, my wife and I got, you know, reconnected and passionate and it's like physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, and relationally, I went from rock bottom to, uh, you know, some of the best I'd ever been in a two month period. Cool. And yeah. that's where the idea for the book came. And it took me four years to get my, you know, what together and actually write <laughs> it. And, and it published a year and a half ago. And I'm now very grateful and very humbled to say it is one of the top rated books out of the 11 million books on Amazon.com, cool. number one in its category. And, um, um, you know, there are tens of thousands of people around the world. I get emails every day from people saying that 
the Miracle Morning, they've been doing it for, you know, seven days and it's changed their life or 150 days. Or I got a message the other day from a guy who it was his 600th consecutive Miracle Morning. Wow. And he was explaining all the ways his life had absolutely transformed. Holy moly. So it's guaranteed. Guaranteed to show results. I mean, yeah, yeah you know, I think it's everybody, if you do it, yeah, it's right. guaranteed. Right. And I'm happy if somebody buys the book and, <laughs> and does it, dude, I'll, I'll give you double your money back. I mean, I'm, I'm, I am so, you know, I, I, I never really imagined, Jacob, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm sure I, you know, in my wildest dream, I imagine, but I, I never imagined that it would become as, as popular as it has. And, and more importantly, as you know, make such profound impacts in people's lives. Like, I mean, I think, you know, we, we've had, um, you know, I don't know, yesterday we had like seven new five-star reviews on Amazon. And if you just go read them, they're in it, it, like, they are 350. I just looked recently, 350 reviews you got for your book. So, and people are loving it. It's like 4.5 stars. It's awesome. The question I have for you though, yes. when it, before we dive into the steps and you know, how, how can one kind of set up their life to, to have a miracle morning, you know, you woke up that first day, Christmas morning, jacked up, ready to go. You're probably like wiggling in your pants when you're trying to meditate, you know, because you're yeah. like, oh my God, it's so cool. It's awesome. But the question I have for you after, we'll say it's it's like when you start a new diet. At first you go to the grocery store, you, you get all your food for the week. It's all healthy. You're like, yeah, I can't wait. This is going to be the new me. And then after that seven days, after that fourth day, what have you. Did did for you, did, did you kind of go through a lull, a little bit of a dip before you really accelerated up? I mean, I think, yes, the question or the answer is absolutely yes. Yes. Okay. And I still go through them. You know what I mean? Sure. It's, it's okay. life, right? Right. Um, but true, I do true. get that email or, or those messages quite a lot, quite often. If someone will say, hey, I've been doing it for, you know, 12 days or 30 days or 70 days. And, you know, I'm kind of like, how do I like it's starting to get a little mundane. How do I keep it fresh? Sure. And my advice is two, twofold. Number one, uh, if anything in our life is not working the way we want it to, right? It's not the thing's fault, <laughs> you know, <Sure. laughs> it, it's, it's our, easier to blame our that though. responsibility to make like that. That's like saying my relationship isn't exciting anymore. It's not right. There's no romance or passion. Yeah. Well, what, OK, well, what do you do? We just sit at home and watch TV. Back? It's not exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are you doing <laughs> to, to, to take 100 percent responsibility for creating that passion and romance? Oh, right. well, nothing. I'm just going through the motions. Right. So same thing with the miracle morning is you've yeah. got to I mean, part of it is, you know, I mean, it's like anything affirmations. I'm such a, a, a such a huge convert with affirmations. I used to be so skeptical and be like, because I, I, I don't know if you remember that Saturday Night Live skit from like, shit, it's like 15 years old. It's a, but, but uh, Stuart Smalley, where he would look in the mirror and read affirmations. Oh, yeah. And go, oh, of course. I'm right? good enough. I'm smart yeah, enough. I'm good enough. Gosh, I'm darn smart enough. Like and gosh, darn it. People <laughs> like me. So that gave affirmations a bad rap. Like people kind of thought sure. they were silly. Right. Um, but I, I now know that it is the most effective way to program your subconscious mind with the beliefs and the mindset that you need to achieve everything else that you want in your life. Right. And, uh, and that goes for, you know, if the mirror, if anything in your life is getting mundane or whatever. So first and foremost, you've got to take responsibility for your self-talk and how you talk to yourself about it to re-energize and re-motivate yourself. Um, but then also, uh, the second part of it is, is keep it fresh by, by, you know, putting variety into it. So great example, the miracle morning is comprised of six practices. And in fact, let me just say this real quick. There's really, I've been asked, I was asked recently by a friend of mine who is a, a filmmaker. Ah, and actually I'm excited that, uh, we, we are now committed to make the miracle morning documentary as his next film, which is pretty cool. Wow. Congrats, man. Yeah. That's it awesome. was funny. He asked me for advice on what his next film should be. And I'm like, dude, you should make a documentary. <laughs> and for like a half an hour, I'm asking him what he's passionate about. I'm giving him all these ideas on, you know, talking about greed in America. Cause that's a real hot button for him. Sure. And like a half an hour in, he goes, why don't we do the miracle morning dog? I'm like, Oh geez. Yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> why didn't I think of that? So, <laughs> right. Um, right. But, uh, but anyway, he asked me why the Miracle Morning was, you know, what about it was, was made it so effective for people. And, and I just want to share this before I forget. But, um, and I said, you know what, there's really three things. Number one is the book does an extraordinary job of selling people on or really like clarifying that, that how they spend the first hour of their day isn't just like kind of important. It's arguably the single most important change that people can make to take their life to the next level. So the first part is people get really like, oh, wow, okay, wow, I never really realized how powerful and important this was and that hitting the snooze button was so detrimental to my success. 
Right. Second part of the book, and maybe the most important part, and this is like the shortest chapter. It's like a five-page chapter. It's the five-step snooze-proof wake-up strategy. Whoa. And it teaches you the simplest, most effective way to wake up in the morning and get yourself out of bed if you're not a morning person. Sure. Wait, let me get my wife in here. I got to get my wife in here for this part. She needs that part? <laughs> so, and the okay. reason it's the most important part, but well, the third part, by the way, is the six, the six steps that I'm going to mention right now that I was about sure. to go into. Sure. The six practices of the miracle morning. But here's the deal. If, I only t- if you only got the first part and the third part, you'd be like, dude, I am sold on, I got to wake up early, and I know exactly what to do when I'm up. I've got this, the life, these six practices called the lifesavers. Without the middle piece, people would do exactly what you said, which is they'd be like, oh, man, I tried it for like three days, and then sure. I just, I just sure. fell back into my old habits, man. I just hit the snooze button, and I couldn't get out of bed, right? Right, right. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I that's totally part that. of it is you start to like – you start to follow those steps. You're like, wow, waking up is actually easy. So if it's easier to do than it ever has been before, you're much more likely to do it, right? Right, right. So that's you know, part of it. You know, and I think going off of that snooze button, you know, routine, if you have a reason why you're waking up to do these six steps, I think it makes it that much easier. And I was going to talk about this later on. I actually, I wake up around 5 a.m. and I usually read when I first wake up and we'll get into more of your personal steps in a minute, but I find myself, you know what, if you don't really have a game plan of starting off your morning, my dog is injured, so I can't walk him right now. That's what I usually do. I walk, wake up, walk him, and I read, and then I kind of go into my you know, daily routine. Um, but if you don't really have anything scheduled out, I was kind of like lost there for a little bit because I usually take him for about a 45-minute walk, and without – Without that walk, I, I started almost dazing off when I was reading, you know, so it was like I need these I need steps put in place. And wh- that's why I really believe in your theory in this miracle morning, because it gives people an outline, a guideline to st- wake up and to dive into the, the things that they need to do to become a successful and f- live a fulfilling life. So I love it, man. Yeah, a- absolutely. Um, so the uh, thank you for that. That's a great, a great, a great insight. Yeah. yeah. Um, the so the lifesavers the six practices which just to give people a visual of this you can see it in your mind here the word savers is an acronym so when i was writing the book it just hit me one day it was meditation uh affirmations visualization exercise reading and then journaling and i was writing those out and i noticed a little bit of a pattern in the letters where it was maver m a v e r and then j <laughs> and i'm like maver i'm like saver like saver hit me and i'm like meditation that could be silence Right. Ah, nice. So then I was nice, like, "Savor, nice. ja, damn it!" Right. <laughs> and it literally—I'm so—it's so funny how it took me like six months, where that was—it was originally the saver plus J model. And my wife one day goes, "Why don't you use the thesaurus and like think of a different word for journaling that maybe starts with S?" I'm like, "Geez, you're so yeah. brilliant! I'm such a moron." <laughs> um. So, uh, so yeah. So that's how the saver. So savers are the six practices. So. But here's the thing to go, you know, really bring it full circle with your question of what if it's getting boring or what if, you know, you're like, uh, you know, you're or you're just like, I'm just saying like you hit a lull, you know, you you get into something, you know, and you're just kind of like, man, you know what? Things are creeping into your mind. You know, you're meditating, but, you know, the issues with your family or whatever is creeping in and and everything gets thrown off. You know, I'm just I'm just curious, you know, is there is there a, a traditional dip before you really accelerate? So, so going through um, the in the Miracle Morning, there's a 30 day challenge that we teach. Right, the end of the book okay. is a 30 day challenge. And uh, as a coach, I have spent you know dozens and dozens of hours studying habit mastery. I've read books on it. I've read articles on it. I've done all sorts of experimentation because you know our life is created by our habits. Right. And and the Miracle Morning is really a new habit. It's like all right, I'm waking up early and I'm doing it this is. thing. Um. So what I found of all the research I've ever done, all the experimentation. Uh, there, there's what I call, it's a three, there's three phases to implementing a new habit. It takes 30 days. The first 30 days, the first, I'm sorry, the first 10 days are, are the, and if you want to jot this down, if you're listening, it's the unbearable phase. Days one through 10 is what I call unbearable. Days 11 through 20 is the uncomfortable phase, uncomfortable. And days 21 through 30 is the unstoppable phase. Awesome. unstoppable. And let me explain these. And this is for yes. any new habit. If when I was becoming a runner, first 10 days, I freaking hated it. And I used words like, oh my God. And literally physically, mentally, emotionally, I mean, like physically, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sore. My hips are sore. Like my butt is sore. I don't want to <laughs> run. My feet are sore. My, my toes are callous. Like I'm getting blisters, you know, right? 
Physically, right. you hate it. Mentally and emotionally, you're like, I'm so bored and I'm tired and I can't <laughs> breathe. And, right? That's the first 10 days. And so same thing with waking up early, do the miracle morning. You're like, oh, I'm so tired. It's already 6 a.m. I can't believe it. Now, there is an anomaly here, and, and, and this is with some habits, but especially the miracle morning. Often, people's first few days or even five days is uh, exciting because it's new. Oh, They're yeah, up early. Sure, they feel right. unstoppable from the right. very beginning. But then it's inevitable that you will, you know, after that initial high, you right. will fall into that lull, that, that unbearable phase. And so here's my question for you, Jacob. Um, can, can you or me or any of us uh, do, if, if we identify a habit that is truly going to have lasting, you know, profound and lasting impact in our life, um, and, uh, but no matter how difficult it is, can we do anything for 10 days if, if we're committed? Yes, yes. And that's it. It's that you go, okay, even if like, you know, those of us who only do what we feel like don't do very much, right? Very true, very and true. And so it's, it's, you've got to identify, what do I need to do to take my life to the next level? Okay, I'm committed to doing it until it's not hard to do anymore. And that's right. roughly 10, there's this 10-day period. And for some people, it might be 12 days. For some, it might be eight or nine. But roughly the first 10 days, it will feel unbearable. You won't like it. Right. But then you get into the uncomfortable phase, which still isn't a picnic, but it's where you go, you know what? I don't hate it anymore. I'm not loving it yet, but it's not so bad, right? It's right, like I don't right. hate it, but I still, you know, you we push through it. But the power comes during the final ten day phase, where you go from unbearable to uncomfortable to unstoppable. And when you become unstoppable, here's how you know. For me, it was around day 23 when I was lacing up my running shoes in the morning, and I was like, I can't wait to go running. Awesome. Yeah, and and then I, and it hit me. I was like, Whoa! Did I just think to myself, I can't wait to go running? And that's when you become unstoppable because it's not hard to do something that you can't wait to do. Now, right. very important distinction, and this is what I'll say to wrap up this lesson, is um, many people, when they have one good day with their habit, or, or like there's the old philosophy that was, I, re, I believe it originated in the book Psycho-Cybernetics, which is that it takes 21 days to implement a new habit. Let's say you get to 21 days. You made it through the unbearable phase. You made it through the uncomfortable phase. You're like, I hit 21 days. I'm awesome. <laughs> and then you're like, I'm going to reward myself with like a week off. You know? Oh, boy. Or a few oh, days boy. Off. <laughs> well, here's the thing. When you, when, you're, when you take a few days off and then you're, getting, you're, you're ready to get back to the habit and you're, you're looking back, okay, 10 days were unbearable. The next 10 days were uncomfortable. Jacob, how excited are you to dive back in? Right, right. Not very excited. No, no, no. So no, it's very important that you, you, you stick to those final 10 days and you reinforce the positive anticipation and expe expectation and experience where you're like, I'm loving it, 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 10 days of that before you take a break because now you're excited to jump back into it. Yeah. No, I really believe in that. And I, I agree with you that, uh, you know, this is a habit that needs to be implemented into our lives. So let's let's rotate now to the the six, the savers. Let's talk specifically. We got a couple of minutes left. Let's talk yeah. specifically on, on these topics. Give us, you know, kind of the baseline, you know, how can somebody start? You know, and the, the big question is meditation. I've talked to numerous people on this podcast. I've done it myself. You know what? We have ants in our pants. A lot of things going through our mind. What What is your signature thing that you tell people that are starting off for the first time when it comes to meditation? So two things: either Google how to meditate, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, but but here's what I recommend for someone that's new to meditation: uh, the I, I recommend that you start with a guided meditation, and I'll give you oh, okay. a couple of my favorites. Um, simply being is a great meditation. An iPhone app. So these are iPhone apps. And by the way. If you don't have an iPhone, uh, first of all, what's wrong with you? Right, Second, exactly. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Second of all, um, uh, you know, you can go to YouTube and Google guided meditation and you can get free guided meditations. Or you, just, you can Google free guided meditation and you'll find some, right? But there's a couple apps. I like Simply Being. Um, I like Mindfulness. And I go back and forth depending on the mood. Like if I want to hear the chick's voice in Simply Being, I'll listen to that one, right? <laughs> Sometimes her voice, her voice gets on my nerves after a while. So I'm like, all right, I want the, I want the dude's voice in mindfulness, right? <laughs> um, there's another popular one called Headspace. Um, sure. And I'm going to give you a bunch and you find the one that you like. Um, these are the ones that are – I'm looking at my iPhone. These are all in my iPhone in my Miracle Morning folder. Cool. Um, that's, that's more than enough. That's more okay, than that's enough. more than enough. All right. So Simply Being, Mindfulness, and Headspace. Um, so that's what I'd recommend. Start with Guided Meditation. Cool. Um, That's a good idea. And, uh, and, and let, let it guide you, and then you can get to the point where you try it on your own. 
Good. All right. I like that. That's a great, that's a great tip. And, and we're all doing this we're, for starting off. We're doing 10 minutes at a time, correct? That's the best way to, that's right. the way that I like to start it. Then you might get to where you do like longer, like 20 minutes of exercise, 20 minutes of reading, and then sure. five minutes of the other practices. Okay. Um, affirmations. I've, I've, I've looked this up briefly. I want to hear your explanation on, um, how can we start writing out these affirmations and are we writing them to ourselves? You know, give us, give us the baseline of that. So here's the deal with affirmations. Here's four quick steps to make an affirmation. Uh, what what I want, right? So right, clarify in your affirmation what I want. And what is that? Want in life, goals, um, personally? You make affirmations. So I, I think it's the more specific you are, the okay. better. All right, cool. Um, and, and obviously in the Miracle Morning book, I've got, you know, I've got like sample affirmations that people can download and all that stuff. But um, but in general, what do I want right now? Like, what's the next thing I want in my life? I think the more narrow your focus is, the better. The more specific you are, the better. What do I want in my life? Why do I want it, right? Be really clear on, you know, because sometimes when you get into that, that part, you go, you know what? I don't actually want it. It's just that I have pressure from my spouse or my boss uh, or my, sure. you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't really want it, you know, so then you got to start over and go, okay, wait, let's go to something I really do want. What do I really want? Why do I want it? And here's one that many people don't identify. What's preventing me from getting it? That's the third mm-hmm. step. What's preventing me from getting it? You've got to get really clear so you can remove that obstacle or figure out how you're going to manage it and get over it. And then, and then finally, what am I committed to doing daily? Right? What am I committed to doing daily? What daily activity or habit or you know, whatever routine will get me that result and put that into an affirmation and read it every day and it will focus your mind. Um, cool. and the only thing I'll say on affirmations, the last tip I'll give everybody kind of an advanced tip, if you will, basic, but advanced. Um, many people teach affirmations that you write. I am statements. I am rich. Yes. I <laughs> am skinny. Um, yeah. and what that's really is I am full of shit. Pardon my French, because <laughs> if you're not those things, then your mind will call BS on them. When you read them, you need yeah. to phrase them on. I am committed to becoming blank by doing blank. That's what an affirmation does. It enforces what's possible for you and reinforces what you need to do to make that a reality. Sure. All right, cool. And now are we reading this throughout the day or are we just writing it out and we tear off a new sheet and we start again the next morning? No, I, you or, I, you want to print your affirmations, right? You know, make them on your computer. Okay. And then as you're reading books and you're meditating, you're, as you are evolving, your affirmations should grow and evolve. So every day, or not every day, but you know, if I read something or I have an idea or a thought, I go, I, see. I need to be reinforcing that in my mind every day. I go into my affirmations, I edit them and I print out a new one. Cool. So you start with a little sm- snowball. You keep on adding layers to it until it turns into something that you're really craving and wanting and needing or whatever. Exactly. That you plan and for you your can life. create an affirmation for like, you know, each category. You could go, here's my health affirmation. Here's uh, my fitness cool. affirmation. Here's my relationship affirmation. Here's my money affirmation, right? So you could have cool. like, a, you know, a few sentences or answer each of those four points, right, for each area of your life. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Cool. Let's get into visualization. Yep, here's uh, visualization as it is taught by most gurus and experts, I believe is really missing the boat for people. Uh, It's most often taught, uh, visualize the end result as if it were already a reality. And that's great, but that's only the first half of the equation and arguably not the most important half. The reason that you do that is what happens is when you visualize a, a desired result or a goal or a dream and you create a picture of it, It goes from being a vague idea or a desire in your head to a clear vision, which now shows you that it's possible because you now see what it's going to look like. That increases your belief. It increases your desire to make it a reality. So that's the first part. Very important. However, the second half of my visualization time. So if I'm visualizing for 10 minutes, I'm going to spend five minutes seeing that picture, feeling it. The second half of the visualization, though, is I'm going to bring it to the present day and I'm going to see myself doing what I need to do, taking the necessary action that day cool. with a freaking smile on my face, with energy, so that I reinforce not just what it's going to look like in two years or a year or six months, what do I got to do today to make it a reality? And, and it should be to the point where you're by the end of your visualization, you want to open your eyes and do the thing that you're seeing yourself doing. And often it's the thing that you're afraid to do. Right. So often if it's making sales calls, when I was a sales rep, I would see myself making calls with a smile on my face. I see I'd imagine the customer on the other end of the line setting appointments. I'd get motivated to make calls, which if it wasn't for the visualization, 
I would have fear in my mind and in my heart and in my emotional space that would prevent me from taking that action. So that's where visualization becomes very powerful. That is um, really great explanation, especially for somebody that doesn't really know about it. So let's get into the next step, exercise. Yep, exercise. I mean, you know, I, hopefully everyone knows what that is, right? <laughs> um, the importance of morning exercise, though, is it, it does, it gives you that mental and emotional clarity uh, that allows you to think clearer and be more effective throughout the rest of your day. And, yeah. and, and let me just say this. The Miracle Morning is not just an hour routine. It is completely scalable. In fact, it could be a 30-minute routine. Most people do an hour. But Jacob, the, um, there is a chapter in the Miracle Morning book called sure. The Six-Minute Miracle Morning. Uh, it probably sounds like a gimmick, right? Like right. the one minute this or that. Like the four-hour work week. Four, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know anybody that's actually working four hours. I'm, get, I'm getting closer, but not There not you quite. go. <laughs> um, but, but the six-minute miracle morning is legitimate. It, I created it for myself on days where I was like, oh, I don't have time to do a miracle morning. And then I was like, wait a minute. One day I thought, what if I do six minutes? What if I do one very focused, very present minute of each of the lifesavers? So I did it, and it was amazing. I felt not just one-tenth as good as I felt over an hour Miracle Morning, I felt like 90% as good. I was like, wow, one minute of silence, really just getting present, whether it's prayer or meditation, it really creates peace. So going through a six-minute Miracle Morning, and so even 60 seconds of exercise, do jumping jacks for 60 that's, seconds that's point. That's will point. significantly increase your mental and emotional clarity. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, reading, uh, you're, you're, you love reading books. What kind of books should we read all about um, you know, self-improvement, stuff like that? Yeah, I'm not talking about reading you know, Fifty Shades of Grey <laughs> or Harry Potter every day. Uh, nothing against those books, but I'm talking right. about books that will increase your level of personal development so you can get closer sure. to a level 10. Every time you read a book on a topic, you're notching yourself closer to being a level 10 in that topic. So, What's your top two books? Oh, shoot, that's good. Um, one of my favorites right now is called Vision to Reality. Vision okay. to Reality um, by Honoré Corder, and it's it's actually a, not a well known book, but but really good on you know goal setting and creating your vision, your reality. And another one that I am in the middle of reading, it's it's quickly becoming a favorite. It is called the Twelve Week Year. Wow. Okay. Yep. Cool. All right. Very good. And uh, during when we're reading, are we taking notes? Are we highlighting? Are yeah, we... yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it's funny you say that because in, in the beginning of the Miracle Morning, I say, look, all right, listen up, grab a pen. I don't want you to keep this book pristine. I want you to oh, okay. underline and cool. circle and write notes. And yeah, so no, I, I mean, I, I think I, I'm kind of anal, so, you know, uh, OCD. So I used there to want go. my books all perfect. Right. And I realized that's not what they're for. They're, exactly. they're so you can go back at any moment and revisit all the parts that really made an impact on you. True. Uh, lastly, journaling. So journaling, I, uh, it, it's, it, this is funny. So there is a, I made a miracle morning journal. Like there, there's only one journal out there before that I'd found the winner's journal that really, uh, really spoke to me where it had some structure in it. So I kind of okay. modeled what I had learned from that journal, a bunch of other journals, and I made the miracle morning journal. However, oh. It is no longer my favorite journal. This might sound, you know, <laughs> kind of funny. I, I discovered a new journal, and actually, I, I talked about this on a, on a call this morning. Um, I go, look, guys, if I was in this thing for the money, I would say buy the Miracle Morning Journal. <laughs> That's um, a good point. I'm in this for the most value that I can add, and I'm not good. affiliated with this other journal at all. But it is my favorite. It is called Five Minute Journal. Um, I discovered it probably two or three months ago, and um, it's it's incredible. It is both, and I first found it as an app on the iPhone. Uh, and I've been using, I love it. And then, uh, I, and, and I just now bought the, they make a hardcover copy, which I didn't even know it at first. I have one for me and one for my wife. And every day we go through and, uh, we just started this, uh, yesterday. We go through and do our five minute journal together and we write, and it's real. let me tell everybody what it is. So you can buy the journal or you can just follow the model. Sure. There's five points that every day, three in the morning, two at night that you answer, I uh, call them prompts. Um, three things you're grateful for. Three things that would make today great, which is empowering. That gives you, takes your clarity from a two to like a nine in terms of what you need to do, not just to be busy today, but to make measurable progress towards your, your grandest vision for your life. So uh, three things you're grateful for, three things that you need to do to make today great, and then your affirmation for the day. So the journal actually has you write like a, a, a you know one or two sentence affirmation on what you're committed to doing that day to make it great. And then at the end of the day, you do an evening part and you just uh, write down uh, three amazing things that happened that day. 
and what you could have done better. Huh. I could nice. not. I literally have gone over that and go, what what could I what could make this structure better? What could I is there a way I could say one of these or, you know, what what how could I improve on this? And I literally can't think of it. It's, it's perfect in giving you the really creating an optimum mindset for you uh, every single day. Cool. Cool. Hail man. Honestly, this has been if the people listening right now found no value in this, <laughs> I, I, you you must be deaf, I guess, uh, because I got a whole note, a uh, whole notebook here full of um, ideas and stuff. And truly, hail man, I think what you're doing, what you're spreading, is truly remarkable. I believe in the system. I believe starting your day off right, having a system that you put together um, of these these fundamental steps is is awesome. So um, I know you're going to continue spreading the word about this, and I know your um, goal is to reach a million people. Correct. Yeah, it is. Change, change one million lives one miracle morning at a time. That is that is awesome, man. So keep on preaching the good word. And do you have any final thoughts for the listeners of Operation Self Reset? Yeah, I'll share a couple, just real quick, a couple of resources. Yeah. Um, the, the Miracle Morning community on Facebook has become the, the, I never, my vision for it was was never very much. <laughs> and sure. it, it has become the most inspired, encouraging, supportive, and accountable online communities that I have ever seen. And I invite everybody to come join, uh, whether or not you've read the book. A lot of people join before they read the book and you'll be inspired. I mean, you'll be like, oh my gosh, people are like, this is, it, it's the most, yeah. So yeah, go to Facebook, <laughs> um, just search the Miracle Morning community. It is a private group. I keep it private so people, you know, their stuff's not seen by anyone. Um, but but it is, but I will accept you. If you ask, just ask to join and I will personally make sure that you are approved and you're accepted. And then if anybody um, is not ready to buy the Miracle Morning book, you know, if you want to get it, of course, you can get it on Amazon. But if you're at a place where money is so tight right now that you're like, how I don't have 13 bucks or whatever to spare, you can get uh, a few free chapters, a free video, and a free audio training. Uh, I call it the Miracle Morning Crash Course at MiracleMorning.com. Jacob, so all your friends, uh, your listeners can go to MiracleMorning.com. Yeah. Get some freebies, dive in a little bit, and, and get started. And then, you know, eventually, if you want to get the book, it's on Amazon. We'll put all of the links in the show notes. Um, Hale, honestly, remarkable stuff, and um, and it's been an honor to have you on here. Great energy, love the enthusiasm, and I know the listeners have gained so much. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Jacob, it's been an honor, man. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I appreciate all of you, and uh, we'll talk soon. Well, what do you guys think? Are you going to change your morning routine because of Hale? I hope so. I think, you know what, there is a lot of benefit to waking up early with a game plan, a way to start your day with mental clarity, to be grateful for things, everything like that. I I suggest you guys take some notes on this podcast episode and implement it into your life. It might give you the results that a lot of his customers have been receiving from doing this morning routine. I'm going to start doing it. I actually did it one morning already, and I really enjoy it. I, I think it gives a lot of value to why you need to wake up early. You know, there's a reason why. It's not like you're just waking up and you're like, oh, I'm just going to sit around the house and watch TV. No, you're getting up and you're trying to better yourself. So that's it for today's episode. If you guys want to get more information about Hale, find out where to buy the book, how to get in touch with Hale understand what the heck this podcast episode was even about, head on over to osreset.com forward slash miracle morning. And from there, you can find out all the resources, all the links and all the great things about Operation Self Reset and hell. So guys, thank you very much for staying tuned to Operation Self Reset. And if you're interested in resetting your own personal life, I have six high quality PDF files to give you for free all about motivation, finding your passion, understanding how to keep yourself in the right mindset throughout the day, even when you don't want to. I highly suggest you guys go on over to osrpodcast.com. That's osrpodcast.com and find out how to get yourself these six high quality PDFs. Like always, guys, you guys rock. You guys are awesome. We'll keep in touch and stay tuned to next week, Monday for another motivational minute followed by on Wednesdays, Operation Self Reset. Have a great week. We'll talk to you guys soon.